I'm doing it. One more video in 2022. It's not the shipping container makeover video that I'd hoped. We had some setbacks, which I'll talk about in that video when it's ready to go. But I bought a lot of gear this year and I figure I would uh, give you some insight as to why I purchased what I did. Maybe it helps you in your purchasing decisions. If not, you just like to check out gear. Well, this is what I bought, starting with the Sony FX6. Camera is incredible. It was probably my second or third most expensive purchase this year, but uh, it's an incredible piece of gear and it's replaced my Sony FS7 Mark II. It did all the extra things that I needed it to while being like half the size and weight but I can build it out when I need to as well when I'm shooting hockey or CFL content. Um, shooting on the sidelines, it's a lot easier with a big lens like the 100 to 400 over here to have it rigged out a little bit more um, on an easy rig or built up on the shoulder. But when I need to, it's tiny. People don't really notice it as much and I love it. The second piece of gear that I bought this year that didn't really think I was gonna buy because I don't do a ton of gimbal work or at least I didn't do a lot of gimbal work until this year, the RS3 Pro is awesome. It does everything every other YouTube video claims it does. It's lighter, battery lasts longer, motors are stronger, it can hold my FX6 stripped down. And with the side arms built onto the sides, it's super smooth. My original Ronin S, the motors just weren't quite as strong. It was really finicky to set up and I didn't like making clients or producers wait on set while I was trying to finick around with that thing and this guy with the auto locking and being able to just put into the sleep mode when you're seat belting into a car to move between locations. It's amazing, it's got quarter 20s and three eighths mounted all over the side arms. If you buy these, they are separate, um, as well as cold shoes and NATO rails. Like they thought of everything with the side arms. Running these guys is Super crucial if you're gonna be using a gimbal all day because if you don't have the full ready rig set up on a bigger camera mount, these will save your shoulders so much more than just running it um, single-handed like the gimbal is sold. Audio is incredibly important to your production and sometimes you're not always able to have a sound person on set with you and you need that wireless audio. So right now I'm using the Sennheiser AVX but there was an issue when I had to send off both of my receivers off for repair. Both of the contact points on them just weren't connecting, so I was losing signal and they were powering down when they shouldn't have been. And I had to go out and make a panic purchase before heading off to the Grey Cup in Regina, Saskatchewan. That panic purchase was the DJI mics right here. And as an all-in-one kit, they were amazing. The only downside, they don't work as well with the Sony FX6 without some workarounds but using it on my A7S III when we had two hosts um, giving updates throughout the week leading up to the Grey Cup. These guys worked amazingly well because they charge all inside this case. You get backups because they record internally into the uh, mics themselves. You can just plug them on like that, or you can use the magnet that's there, and it records internally and sends the signal straight to your camera. It can also record in multiple levels, so if one is peaking, the other one, you have a safety track as well. Everything just works seamlessly with this, and uh, I was still able to hide them fairly well on the inside the jackets of our hosts as well, even with the dead cats that also come with these mics. Like, they thought of everything. They're awesome. Uh, great backup to your more professional microphones if you're in dire straits, and you can fit a lavalier uh, on that as well. DJI mics, they're great. In keeping with the theme of audio, I've got the Rode Video Go 2. Now this microphone, I actually saw first when Jesse was using it. He bought one earlier in the year. Christoph was looking at one for his A7 IV and I figured I'd jump on that order and I think he actually ended up buying this one for me. So thanks for the purchase, Christoph. And I bought the Dead Cat in addition because if you're shooting outside, you just need it. But the big thing that this added on from the micro was an extra shock mount stabilization. This has two. The micro had one and it got a little bit floppy every now and then and it would just make for some unwanted noise. This also has a USB-C connection so you can record directly into your laptop or recorder of choice. So voiceovers are really easy with this as well. And overall, it's just a great little microphone kit. Earlier in the spring this year, I was still editing on my old MacBook Pro, which had an Intel processor. I'm not a big computer guy. All I know is that everyone was saying that the new M1 Max MacBook Pros were insanely fast. And when I was trying to edit social media content that was being sent to me almost live 
which I had to edit and send out that night. My old Intel just couldn't handle that footage whatsoever. So I rage purchased a $6,000 M1 Max MacBook Pro, 64 gigs of RAM, four terabyte SSD, and the thing is a beast. It's still editing insanely fast, even though I have a full documentary still on here waiting for appro final approvals from our clients. No, he's given us final approvals. We just have to premiere it. So it's living on here for safety. It's incredible. I love it. If you have the cash, you will not go wrong with the M1 Max MacBook Pro. So I've been doing my best to get myself organized in 2022. Since a lot of my kit has changed, I've been trying to downsize a lot of the equipment and I've changed out my Pelican cases as well, which I'll talk about very shortly. But in doing that, I did lose some of the top divider kits that I had in my old Pelican cases. So I needed to find a new way to organize cables, microphones, some of that smaller equipment and accessories to keep yourself shooting throughout the day. And to uh, solve for that, I picked up three different brands of bags actually. One is from Think Tank. This is the cable management version two. This is the 10 size. So they go 10, 20, 30. I picked up a 10 and I picked up a 20 as well. And you can just throw any of your little accessories right now. I just have some electrical tape. I've got some Allen keys, bongo ties in the little guy here. The next size up, I actually have an SSD. I've got a SDI cable and an SSD card reader as well as a GoPro Max battery. A little random right now, but you can see right into it. So you can grab the things that you need really quickly. And the nice thing with Think Tank is that they give you the bongo ties with each one of the bags that you buy. So super handy, pretty cheap. I think each one of these goes for around 30 or $40 Canadian. So again, do your conversion and uh, they're a great piece of kit. One that I didn't think I'd be this excited to grab, uh, but they're awesome. Shape has their own version. It's windowed on both sides and you have sashes inside or uh, little bungees so you can keep your cables even more organized. I find with the window, you can just toss them in there and find the cables that you need pretty well right away. In all honesty, I didn't actually pay for cord bag. They were sent to me from cord bag as well as this hat and uh, cord bag, great job on making a hat that actually fits my head. I'm wearing it all the time now because there aren't many hats that fit my tiny peanut head. Um, but back to the bags, they're great because they have patches that you can uh, Velcro onto their bags so you know exactly what's in there. So with these ones, I try and keep these a little more organized since they are labeled. In this one, you've got wireless audio. So I keep my AVX um, receivers, transmitters, labs, earbuds, uh, a little Apple iPad charger, as well as a dual micro USB, which is how I charge the AVX kit right there. And I haven't filled out the bigger ones yet, but there's plenty of uses for them and I love keeping myself organized. So pick yourself up one of these organizer bags because they're amazing. It is absolutely freezing in this container right now, so jacket's on. But the next piece of gear that we are talking about is the Aperture 60D. Now this was actually recommended to me by Dave Makes Movies, who works with Jesse quite a bit and also just launched his YouTube channel, so you should check that out. Links above. Um, but after seeing him using this light, I was sold on it instantly. It's almost as powerful as the original Aperture 120D, but it's also a focusable light. So it's not quite a Fresnel, but you can change the spread of the light while you're shooting. So if you just need a really hard, punchy light, you can do that with this guy, but it also has a Bowens mount adapter as well as barn doors. So you can flip between those as needed. It's also tiny and you can run Sony NPF batteries. So if you're not anywhere near power and you still need this light, NPF batteries are more than enough to keep it powered. Um, you will want to keep a bunch of them though, because NPF batteries are notoriously slow to charge. And this guy at full pop will drain them fairly quickly. So if you just need something low power, these guys do the trick really well. Um, overall, absolutely love this light. I'm probably going to get a 60X at some point because a bi-color version would be amazing as well. Uh, 60D, super mobile, super light. It's great for documentary work, uh, putting it places that a 120D or 300 won't fit. Can't recommend it enough at 565 Canadian, I believe I got it at. And uh, yeah, it's just a, just a great affordable light. Cinematography is all about controlling light and having a map box is gonna help you control that light even further when you're shooting in the outdoors, you need to control sun flares 
or even if you need to keep the elements off of your camera, if you're shooting out in the snow or in the rain, it's gonna keep all of that moisture off of your lens so that your lens stays clear and you're able to keep shooting for longer without having to pull out the microfiber cloth and get a streaky lens, because that's annoying and we've all experienced that. But the Tilted Mirage map box actually also has, obviously, a slot to throw your ND filters or an effect filter. Right now, I have the blue streak filter in there, um, but it also comes with a variable ND also comes with different filter threads so that you, depending on the size of your lens, this matte box will fit on all of those. It also comes with a 15 millimeter rod support. So if you have to get it further away and doesn't fit on the lens of choice that you have, it will still work um, by mounting it onto some rods. So great small kit. You can throw the filters onto your uh, hip if you need to because it also comes with a pouch that you can throw it on your waist. Great piece of kit been super happy with it and uh, that's one of the ways you control light. Oh. And the final piece of gear that I bought in 2022 are two new Pelican air cases. They're replacing my old Pelicans because, well, they broke my back every time I had to lift them up into my vehicle, taking them onto shoots constantly and on flights where weight is an issue, these Pelican claim to be 40% lighter than their predecessors. And I gotta say, I actually believe them because they are much easier to get them up into my truck, into uh, other locations where they have to be up high. My back appreciates how much lighter they are. And even this guy, especially, this is the 1535. It's a carry-on size. So when I'm carrying my drone, my cinema camera, I can fit them all in this and bring it on the flight with me and I don't have to check it below and worry about it making, making it to the next destination that we'll be filming in. So Pelican Airs are amazing. There's not too much more to say about them other than the fact that they are lighter, just as strong and carry all my Another coat tomorrow. Okay, hi. <laughs> How's it going? I'm uh, Netflix cinematographer Christoph Benji. And two years ago, I swore I'd never touch drywall mud again. And here I am. Bye. So that's a wrap on 2022. I managed to squeeze out this last video. And the next one should actually be the storage unit getting done and uh, doing the rest of my container. Thanks, Christoph. No problem. See you in uh, 2023.